uh, Charles and I started working, I guess, in 2015. Charles mentioned to me we were having a lunch, and he was saying, basically, and I looked at the Clinton Foundation financials, and I had not. And Charles at that point said that they were a complete scam. They were a, a criminal enterprise, and Charles had dug in deeply to them. So in 2005, 2016, I began publishing articles uh, in WorldNet Daily at that time based on Charles's research. And it led to me writing a book in 2016 called Partners in Crime, which was about the Clintons monetizing the White House for personal gain and profit. And Charles's great strength is his ability to read financial statements and published uh, government filings. And from that, to derive an analysis of whether the company is legitimate or not legitimate. And the Clinton Foundation, Charles has maintained from the beginning as a uh, massive criminal fraud. And what we're going to discuss today, and I want Charles, I'm going to do this introduction so Charles has the floor for most of the discussion, and that is to present his research largely on O'Brien and the involvement of Ireland in the Clinton Foundation scam. And it's it's quite a story. It's very, it's, it's shocking, actually. All right. So in the United States, uh, the charity sector is actually quite large. Uh, people in the United States give away uh, $200 billion a year, roughly, each year to charities. And all told, uh, statistics, recent statistics suggest that there's about $5.2 trillion in our charity sector. Now, the problem with that, everyone says, you know, profit-making companies, you know, on the left, profit-making companies are evil and not-for-profits are great. When you take a not-for-profit that doesn't have an independent board, that isn't audited, uh, where you're not checking the numbers, that's connected to politically dynast dynastic political families, Republicans, the Bushes, and the Clintons, the Obamas, uh, you know, both sides, who can then work their magic into the career people and the political hacks in the Department of Justice and our IRS, you have the potential to, to become Robin Hood in reverse, to steal from the poor and give to the rich via an unregulated, loosely controlled you know, money laundering operation. Beginning by 2001, around January 2001, when Bill Clinton you know, left the White House but actually in disgrace, he needed something else to do. It was tough to raise money for yet another library in a place like Little Rock. That's not a sexy cause. Yeah. So he got involved. He got involved with various, frankly, crooks. One of them was an, a gentleman called Rajat Gupta, who then was the managing partner of a gigantic consulting firm called McKinsey. And Rajat was in trouble himself. Later, he went to prison for insider trading. Uh, the two of them began. Uh, there was an earthquake in India, and everybody around the world were very generous when we see a floods and earthquakes and tsunamis. Rajat and Bill got together and created a, 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 an illegal charity called the American Indian Foundation. Uh, and that, in one set of disclosures, they claimed that they raised a billion dollars. A bit of well. But in, the, in their official books, they claimed that they raised less than $100,000. And that's, that is the essence of charity fraud. If you have a loosely controlled thing that's, that's going after you know, sexy causes like fighting earthquake relief or AIDS or Haiti, um, billions of dollars will come your way. If you've got you know, famous people around the charity, uh, uh, Bill Clinton and Elton John and Princess Diana, you name it, somebody like that will attract literally billions of dollars via the Internet, via wires and other ways. And if you can convince a gov other government leaders, like your T-shirt. T-shirt, uh, yeah, very good. Charles, well done, Charles. Bertie O'Hearn, uh, in 2003, was seduced into supporting this Clinton Foundation effort to fight HIV and AIDS. That was a completely illegal, unauthorized effort. No one has ever been able successfully to track down the amount of money that actually went to maybe towards that cause. Uh, and I want to go over the your, your research on how the uh, Clintons got the idea of the HIV AIDS. Uh, evidently, the Bill Clinton attended a, um, a rally, a, it was, a, I guess, a, a conference, a World, World AIDS conference in Barcelona 
Spain in 2002, July 2002, with Nelson Mandela. And at that conference, uh, he was asked by the Prime Minister Denzel Douglas of St. Kitts and Nevis to help the Caribbean nations establish funds for the treatment of HIV AIDS. Now, was that was that conference with Mandela in 2002 the origin of this idea that the Clinton Foundation established to create a library, presidential library in Little Rock, would suddenly take on the idea of HIV AIDS? Is that where it got started? It actually got started before then. And it got started before then in two ways. The first way it got started before then was a lady called Sanda Thurman, T-H-U-R-M-A-N, who was Bill Clinton's aide, one of his AIDS advisors when Bill was president. She concocted the idea of creating this crazy thing called the International AIDS Trust in January of 2001. And she convinced Mandela and Blair and Bill Clinton to be honorary chairman of this International AIDS Trust, which raised about a million dollars, over 90% of which came from Bill Gates' charity in 2001, with the purpose, with, it was basically improperly organized, this thing. So they, they raised money, there is a 990 available for this International AIDS Trust, it confirms everything I just told you. There's no evidence that the International AIDS Trust ever got the tax-exempt the authorization that it needs under U.S. law to function. So it was liquidated, the International AIDS Trust, uh, in, I think, 2003. So the first attempt, you could say, to get this thing up and running was stillborn. Early in January 2002, according to a book by, you would know Joe Connison, Jerry, but I, I don't know him personally. Joe is a left-leaning, close friend of Bill Clinton. He's written multiple articles and books about Bill Clinton, defending Bill Clinton, etc., he wrote a book which actually is, is pretty well written and entertaining called, um, uh, the name will come to me, uh, Man of the World. And it's all about, I think the subtitle is The Further Endeavors of Bill Clinton. And in that book, it, it, it came out in September, I think, or October 2016. It's a book that was written fully expecting Hillary Clinton to win. And so, unfortunately for Mr. Connison, Mr. Clinton, and many involved, it is a confession of charity fraud extensive details concerning how this came to light, if you know, if you're to believe Joe Connison. In January of 2002, Ira Magaziner got a phone call from Maggie Williams, who um, asked for, supposedly asked Ira to help Bill Clinton think through how to make his foundation truly impactful. And out of that, Ira, at his own expense, started flying around the world, meeting with world leaders, and did a lot of work prior to the July 1st, or July 2002 confab where you're right bill was there i was there many famous people were there and bill committed by july of 2002 to have his presidential foundation fight hiv aids but you know he, he was not an officer of the clinton foundation he wasn't president he wasn't of the clinton foundation he had no official right to bind the clinton foundation to do anything and certainly not to do things that were outside its authorized articles of incorporation that is just bold-faced illegal activity. 